So what have we learned so far? We have learned various theorems and laws regarding Boolean algebra and seen how to apply them so we can simplify expressions. In many cases, each of the theorems also has a dual of the theorem. So as you can see in the theorems on the left, you have things like x ordered with 0 equals x and x ordered with 1 equals 1. Well, if you take the dual of both sides of the equation there, you get the theorems on the right-hand side. So the dual of x or 0 is x and 1. And the dual of x is just x. Um, and so in all of these theorems, you have a dual, with the exception of the involution law, in which case the dual would just be exactly what you started with. So we can see these theorems here. We also have these here with the associative law, distributive laws, and the various other simplification laws, which were previously introduced, along with De Morgan's laws. So how can we simplify some expressions? The first thing we can do is, quote, multiply out expressions using the distributive property. So in this case, if we had x handed with the quantity y or z, we could distribute the x to the y and to the z and end up with xy or xz. And so in this case, what we've done is transformed from a product of sums to a sum of products notation. We can use the FOIL method. So if you remember FOIL from regular algebra, that's how we can multiply two expressions. But the result is going to be a little bit different than what you may be used to in regular algebra. So if we took x or y and did with the quantity x or z, we could multiply things out. Now notice here, instead of the typical x squared that you might see in regular algebra, exponents aren't defined for Boolean algebra. And so in this case, we'll just label that as x and x. So if you just multiply this out, you get x and x or x and y, or x and z, or y and z. And you remember from the idempotent law, which basically says if you and x with itself, that's the same as just having x, we can simplify this to x, or xy, or xz, or yz. So x times x equals x is obviously only true because the domain here in Boolean algebra is 0 and 1. And in fact, those are the only two numbers in the entire set of real numbers for which x squared is going to equal x. And we can reduce this further by factoring out using the distributive property, the x from the first three terms. So if we factor out an x from x or x and y or x and z, that becomes x and the quantity one or y or z and then we just leave the or y z on the end. Now, inside of the parentheses, the one or y or z can be simplified to just one because one or with anything is a constant one. And so we end up with x and one or y and z. Anything ended with one is just that thing. So x ended with one is just x. And so this simplifies on down to x or y z. So we have just demonstrated that x or y that quantity ended with x or z can be written as x or y and z. Another simplification trick here, if we multiply these two values, x or y and x prime or z, we can think about what happens if we hold x at a constant value, and then we can combine what happens if it's held at a constant zero, or what happens with it with it held at a constant one. So let's see an example of that. If x is equal to one in this case, we'll just put a constant one in for x, zero in for x prime. We get one or y and zero or z. And so the one or y goes to a constant one, zero or z goes to z. And so we've got one and it with z, which works out to just z. And if x is held at a constant zero, we do the same logic, zero or y and with one or z. Zero or y works out to just y, one or z works out to one, and so that simplifies to y.
And now we combine those terms by creating the sum of x and what the expression goes to when x is 1, which in this case is z, and, or x prime and what the expression goes to when x is 0, which in this case we just found was y. And so x or y and with the quantity x prime or z works out to be x and z, that is x and what does the expression go to when x is a 1, or x prime y, that is x prime and what the expression goes to when x is a 0. Now, let's look at another theorem. This is what's called the consensus theorem. And so in this case, if we have something of the form x and y, or x prime and z, or yz, the yz term is called the consensus term, and the consensus term is redundant and can be eliminated. So when you look at this, if you have an expression that has a pair of terms, one of which contains the variable, in this case x, and the other contains the complement of the variable, in this case x prime, then the product of every, excuse me, everything else that goes with those is the consensus term. So if you take the y off of the x and y, and you take the z off of the x prime and z, the product there is a consensus term, in this case y and z, and if that term shows up in the expression, that is going to be redundant with the first two terms and can be eliminated. So we can eliminate, in this case, the y and z by a consensus theorem and just be left with xy or x prime z. So if we look here, what is the consensus term? Well, in our first uh, term there, we have a, b, c, e, or in the second term, we have a prime, b, d. So we have an a and we have an a prime multiplied by something. Now if we pull off those somethings, the something that's multiplied by a in this case is b, c, and e, and the something that is multiplied by a prime is b and d. And so we can multiply those together and get b, b, c, d, e. Now b and b works out to be just b. So in this case, b, c, d, e is the consensus term. And we have a B, C, D, E, and we can eliminate that via the consensus theorem. And so let's go ahead and look at a proof. And this will demonstrate how we can prove a theorem. So in this case, we're going to start with an expression of the form that we had on the left-hand side. So that is X and Y, or X prime and Z, or Y, Z. And one of the things that you can do in Boolean algebra much like you can do in regular algebra, is you can multiply by 1. And in this case, we're going to multiply by a dummy term, in this case, x or x prime. So in this case, x or x prime works out to a constant 1. This is effectively the same as multiplying y and z by a constant logic 1. It's not going to change the logic at all. So that's one thing that you can do is add these little dummy expression so long as it works out to be multiplying by 1. As we'll see later on, you can also add things that work out to be 0, um, such as an x and x prime type term. So now we're going to use the distributive property and distribute out the x and the x prime there across the y and the z. And so we have xy, as we already had, we're going to end up with x, y, z. That is going to come from distributing the x to the y, z. And I just rearranged that term to put it next to the x, y. We still have our x prime, z. And then when we distribute the x prime to the y and z, that gets tacked on to the end there. So now we can factor out the common terms. And the reason we rearranged is that the first two terms here have a common x and y. So we pull out an x and y, and to get those first two terms, those would just be multiplied by 1 or z. And then you might see the last two terms there, the x prime z and the x prime y z, that has a common x prime z. So that's x prime z and 1 or y. Now you'll notice inside of the parentheses, the 1 or z and 1 or y both work out to a constant 1. And so we can eliminate that because it ends up being x and y anded with 1 or x prime and z anded with 1. 
And so this simplifies down to xy or x prime z. And so we just proved that xy or x prime z or yz simplifies down to xy or x prime z. And the yz term goes away, which was the consensus term. So to simplify things using Boolean algebra, we can do a few different things. We can combine some terms. We can eliminate terms such as um, the ors with zeros and ands with ones. We can eliminate some literals. So if you had b and b or a and a, redundant literals can be eliminated. And you can add some redundant terms. So as we just saw, adding things that allow us to multiply by effectively one or add effectively zero is perfectly allowed. When it comes to combining terms, you can use this theorem here, for example, if you had x and y prime or x and y, that theorem says that's equal to just x, and so you can combine the two terms into a simpler one. Also note in all of these theorems, x, y, z, any variable that we're going to use could be a single literal or it could be a combination. So x here might actually be a and b and c. You can eliminate some terms. So if you have anything of this form here, x or x and y, you can eliminate the xy. Now, why can you do that? Well, it turns out for x and y to be a 1, x must be 1. And if x is 1, that's sufficient to make the entire expression 1 without even evaluating x and y. So that means that xy is really a subset of the set where x is equal to 1. And so we can find that there's no utility in this example of having the x and y in there. So you can also think about this as factoring out the x from that. So it ends up being x and the quantity 1 or y. That would end up being x and 1, and that simplifies down to just x. You can eliminate literals. In this case, um, you have x or x prime y. In this case, you can eliminate the x prime because if you had x prime y there, you could add the subset of x, which would be x and y. And if you had x and y or x prime and y, that simplifies down to just y. Here is another example where you can eliminate some literals. So if you were asked to simplify this expression, you have a and b, or the quantity a prime or b prime anded with c. From de Morgan's law, we know that the quantity a prime or b prime is another way to write the quantity a and b quantity primed. And so we could replace it with that. And in this case, our a b term just becomes our x here. So you've got an AB, and then you've got an AB prime, and our C becomes the Y. And so following this theorem that we just had up above, where X or X prime Y can have the X prime eliminated, we can eliminate the AB quantity primed and just end up with AB or C. We can also add redundant terms. So we can add terms that equal 0. We can multiply by terms that equal 1 without harming our original expression. So you can add things like x and x prime, multiply by x or x prime. And you can add subsets. So if you had x, you could add things like x, y, and z. And that's pretty helpful. So it allows us to factor out some common terms to simplify things. So it might not be intuitive to say, hey, we're going to add some complexity. Well, sometimes you have to add in some terms so you can simplify out some terms that already exist. And we will see some examples of that in a moment. So how can you prove a theorem to be true? Well, one way, as mentioned in class and demonstrated in class, is you can provide a comprehensive truth table that showcases that the left-hand side of an expression and the right-hand side of the expression are equal in every possible scenario. And so long as for the entire truth table, the two columns are equal for every possible input, then that is one way to prove that something is true. The other way to prove that something is true 
is to leave one side of an equation fixed. So if you had uh, proof where you were trying to prove that the left side of an equation was equal to the right side of an equation, you could leave one of them there and then manipulate the other side. So you could hold the right-hand side fixed or the left-hand side fixed and just do some algebraic manipulation until the two sides equal one another. Some other notes on simplification. Unlike regular algebra, it's not okay to add the same value to both sides or to multiply. So this works in regular algebra because it's reversible. If you add, let's say, 3 to both sides of an equation, you can ultimately subtract 3 from both sides at the end, and you haven't changed the value. In this case, adding a non-zero term to both sides, there is no such thing as subtraction in Boolean algebra, and so that becomes a problem. Um, same thing with multiplying both sides by a variable. There is no division inside of Boolean algebra, and so that is not a reversible, reversible process. So how do you show that a theorem is invalid? Well, one way is to find a counterexample. And so you could say, well, for the value of x, y, and z equals whatever, the left side equals 0, the right side equals 1, or vice versa, and just plug in the value and show very clearly that the right-hand side ends up being um, something that doesn't make it true. Okay. Or you can manipulate both equations until both sides are not equivalent. So here's an example. In regular algebra, if you had x or y, equals x or z, then you would know that y must equal z, because you could just subtract x from both sides. Well, in Boolean algebra, this is not true, and let's see why. And if we just let x, y, and z be 1, 0, 1, so x is 1, y is 0, and z is 1, then we can plug in those values, and so if we plug that in for x or y, that becomes 1 or 0, that works out to be 1, and so the left side is going to be 1, x or z is going to be 1 or 1, so the right side is going to equal 1, and so x or y does in fact equal x or z, but notice our y is 0 and our z is 1, and so we have differing values there. So this is not true based on a counterexample.